Very first honored guest, um, the first secretary of the Iranian embassy, Mr. Qahramani, with a very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Subhanallazi asra bi abdihi laylan min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa allazi barakna hawlahu linariyahu min ayatina innahu huwa as Samiul Basir Dear sisters and brothers Salamun alaykum It is a pleasure for me to be among you on this great gathering of iftar dinner following the Quds day. The last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan is a reminder of one of the most important and impressive legacies of the late Imam Khomeini, International Quds Day. He turned the day in a symbolic day of unity of Muslims against Israel, as well as the uprising of the innocent nation of Palestine against the occupation. The International Holtz Day is the manifestation of Palestinian refugees and prisoners' cries of innocence and call for justice over the tyranny, oppression, and persecution of the anti-human, child-killing, and criminal Zionist regime, which during the uh, nearly 70 years of its disgraceful life has committed numerous crimes against humanity. So far, a large number of Palestinians have been massacred by the Tel Aviv regime, millions of families displaced, and thousands of others tortured in Israel jails. Palestine history clearly demonstrates that the Zionist regime's policy has always been based on expansionism, hitting a blow to resistance movements in Palestine and Lebanon, putting pressure on people in Gaza and West Bank, arresting the Palestinian citizens and fighters, torturing the prisoners, developing the settlement construction, Judaizing and the Judaizing the Holy Ghost city and insulting and trying to ruin the Al-Aqsa Mosque are just parts of the Zionist regime's atrocities against Palestinians, which are committed on a daily basis within the framework of its expansionist policy. At the same time, the Israeli regime is trying to deceive the world's public opinion by pretending to be an advocate of peace and fight against terrorism and even improving ties with some Muslim countries. Today, we are facing the sinister phenomena of terrorism and extremism in the region, which are fueled and fanned by the enemies of Islam and the Zionist circles to divert the attention of Islamic Ummah from issue of Palestine. The Zionist regime is exploiting terrorist actions conducted by the Takfiri groups as what the terrorists are doing is damaging peace and security of Muslim and Arab countries. And this should be brought to the attention of the global public opinion. Meanwhile, some Islamic countries in West Asia serve the interests of this regime by supporting takfiri terrorist groups and provoking tension in Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and Bahrain. Unfortunately, we are witnessing today that some Arab and Muslim countries are trying to have close relations with the Zionist regime of Israel and are paving the way for establishing normal relations with this criminal regime. Today, the Muslim and Arab nations 
of the West Asia need to preserve their unity against the anti-human regime of Israel and discern their common enemy with profound insight. On the other hand, they have to say, they have to stay extremely vigilant against any plots hatched by the Zionists and their international sponsors to deviate them from the path of resistance and restoration of the rights of the oppressed Palestinians. The Zionists make divisions in the Muslim world to achieve their goals. Palestine is still an important issue of the Islamic world and is a priority for Iran's foreign policy. And the Palestinian developments are closely watched by the Iranian government. The Islamic Republic of Iran supports the Palestinians' resistance against the Zionist regime's occupation and expansionist policy. We believe that the only stable solution to the crisis in Palestine is putting an end to the occupation, returning of all Palestinian refugees to their homeland, and allowing Palestinians to decide on their country's future through democratic referendum by respecting the rights of the Muslims, Jews, and Christians in that country. Here, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to New Zealand government for playing an active role in co-sponsoring and approving of the UN Security Council Resolution 2334 to oppose and condemn the illegal settlement policy of the Israeli regime in the occupied Palestine. Let us together pray to God Almighty in this holy time and ask him to give victory to the Palestinian people in their resistance against the Israeli regime and give us the opportunity to support them all the way to that end. In closing, I would like to congratulate you in advance on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr and thank you all for your attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Some very good points to take from that speech. Another very loud salawat for our honored guest. Muhammad. I would now like to welcome our second respected guest, Sheikh Shafi'i Hujjat al Islam, with a very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. ترجم نمیخواد بیاد اینجا ترجمه کنه خواهش میکنم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سلام علیکم و رحمت الله عرض سلام و ادب و احترام خدمت سروران عزیز خواهران و برادران گرامی و بزرگ داشته یوم الله روز قدس در این مکان عزیز به همت شما مسلمانان و شیعیان این شهر خوشحالم از اینکه در خدمت شما هستم My greetings and uh, salutations to all my brothers and sisters who have gathered here to commemorate and endure the Yom Al-Quds روزی که به فرمان امام راهل عظیم الشان روز قدس نام گذاری شد تا اینکه مشت محکمی باشه بر دهان این قده سرطانی اسرائیل خبیس This is the day that was established by Imam Khomeini رحمت الله علیه to be a continuous blow to the roots of the cancerous tumor of Israel in the region به همت همه ملت های آزاده و مستضعف جهان خاص مسلمانان و شیعیان 
این روز در سراسر عالم هر سال پرشکوهتر از قبل برگزار می شود. This day has been commemorated all over the globe in different countries. Increasingly better and more magnificent in both all different countries. و من امیدوارم این شور و شکوه و این حضور در صحنه مردم همه مردم جهان هر چه زودتر منجر به نابودی و حذف اسرائیل از کره زمین بشود. And I hope that this uh, taking part and uh, livelihood that is shown by the people of all different uh, parts of the world will uh, eventually will create situations whereby the occupation will end. من نمیخوام خیلی مصدق اوقات عزیزان بشم و صحبت امشب من هم خیلی قافل گیر کننده بود ولی در چند دقیقه مطالبی رو محضر شما عرض خواهم کرد I was not expecting to be called to deliver a speech here and so I was caught with surprise but nevertheless I will give you a very short speech some important points on this regard همه شما عزیزان میدونید که اسرائیل و رژیم صهیونیستی پشت یک پدیده جعلی یا لاعقل پدیده ای که به این صورتی که اعلام میشه به نام هولوکاست مخفی شده و اجازه تحقیق راجع به هولوکاست به هیچ کس داده نمیشه fabricated around the question of holocaust and the holocaust is the, that phenomena that in itself would, is not allowed to be investigated and find out what it is من چند تا سوال دارم سوال اول این که اگر این هولوکاست در جنگ جهانی دوم اتفاق افتاده چرا اسنادش رو منتشر نمی کنند و چرا اجازه تحقیق نمی دن I have got a few questions in this regard. First, if this Holocaust has taken, part, taken place in the Second World War uh, in Europe, why are they not uh, distributing the documents concerning this and let people see for themselves? اگر اینجوری که ادعا میشه هفت میلیون یهودی در جریان یهودی سوزی هیتلر و آلمان نازی کشته شدند در مقابل 63 میلیون هم از سایر انسان ها کشته شدند چرا از مظلومیت اونها گفته نمیشه if, uh, if as they say 7 million Jews were burnt by uh, Hitler and his uh, people there were another 63 million people died in different parts of the world why no, nothing is talked about them چرا یک رژیم نجات پرستانه خودش رو باید از همه عالم برتر و تافته جدا بافته ببینه Why should a regime consider themselves uh, separate from the rest of the world and higher uh, than everybody else سوال دوم من اینه اگر این جنایت اتفاق افتاده و واقعا یهودی ها در جریان جنگ جهانی دوم مظلوم واقع شدن تاوانش رو چرا ملت فلسطین و کشورهای اسلامی باید بدن Assuming that uh, the story is correct and the Jews were subject to this uh, Holocaust, why should the people of Palestine for, pay for it? چرا همون کشورهایی که در حق یهودی ها طبق ادعایی که شده ظلم کردن مثل آلمان چرا قطعه ای از آلمان رو به یهودی ها نمیدن به عنوان کشور یهودی؟ Why don't they give the Jews a section, a piece of Germany who did this atrocity as their land? And why should they come to Palestine? همه اینها نشون میده یه توطئه ای هست و اون توطئه بر این رژیم صهیونیستی و لابی های صهیونیستی در بین کشورهای اسلامی رخت نکنند. تا بتونن اون شعار بزرگ خودشون از نیل تا فرات رو به منصه ظهور برسونن It all shows that there is a big uh, scheme and uh, conspiracy in, uh, to establish the bigger scheme of uh, occupying from Nile to فرات uh, which is the, their, uh, their objective, their final objective اینها به دنبال خابر میانی بزرگ بودن ولی با همت ملت‌های مستضعف در سراسر جهان 
و به همت جمهوری اسلامی و انقلاب اسلامی معاطلات منطقه به هم ریخت و خاور میانه بزرگ فقط به سرابی و آرزوی بیش تبدیل نشد They were after creating a bigger Middle East in their own favor but uh, uh, thanks God that the people of the oppressed people of the Middle East as a whole they woke up to this story and they blocked it and uh, alhamdulillah none of that is getting materialized به نظر بنده شمارش معکوس نابودی رژیم صهیونیستی آغاز شده است I think the uh, countdown to elimination of the uh, occupied uh, regime has started و بعضی از تحلیل ها نشان دهنده آن به شرط اینکه ملت ها در صحنه باشند رژیم صهیونیستی 25 سال آینده رو نخواهد دید. And the uh, conditional on people staying in the arena of decision making and expressing themselves where the, this regime the Zionist regime will not see the next 25 years. همه اینها یک عزم جهانی و بین المللی میخواد و من آرزوم اینه یه روزی این جمعیت عظیم و چندین ده میلیونی عربعین که از نجف به طرف کربلا روانه میشن بعد از کربلا به طرف قدس روانه بشن This needs a major collective decision making by the people to congregate together and this millions of people who show their determination in walking from Najaf to Karbala uh, and Kufa, uh, they walk uh, to the Quds, inshallah. یه روزی امام راهل فرمود اگر هر مسلمان یک آب دهان به صورت اسرائیل بندازه اسرائیل رو آب میبره اگر هر جمعیتی از مسلمانان فریادی باشه علیه رژیم صهیونیستی چیزی به نام رژیم صهیونیستی باقی نخواهد ماند از امام رحمت الله علیه هستید if uh, people if muslim people get together and each one uh, pour a glass of water uh, over uh, israel uh, the, 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 the flood will take it away it, uh, wash away the israel من بیش از این مصدق اوقات شما عزیزان نمیشم و آرزو میکنم همه شما به عنوان یک سربازی برای اسلام به انجام وظیفه مشغول باشید و هر روزتون بهتر از روز قبل باشه I will not take your time any further and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a strength so that each one of you like a soldier of Imam Zaman alayhi salam in the front line be every day be more prosperous and more energetic than the day before. آرزو می کنم که انشالله هر چه زودتر فرج امام زمان اتفاق بیفته و با فرج امام زمان چیزی از ظلم در جهان باقی نمانه. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the faraj of Aqa Imam Zaman alayhi salam and with his appearance inshallah none of the injustices in the world will remain. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wassalamu alaykum. MashaAllah, Jazakumullah khair. Another very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam famously said, Your brother is like gold, while your friend is like a diamond. When gold cracks, you can mend it together. But when a diamond cracks, even the slightest, it can't be mended back together. I am now honored to welcome the very knowledgeable Sayyid Dirhami with a very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب الله العالمين أبو القاسم محمد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه المبين ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض 
ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين صدق الله العلي العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى in his book Quran Holy Quran says we have made the ordinance that the people who have been trodden upon people who do not being have not been taken account of people who do not count they are not weak but they have been kept weak mustadhaf that's being kept weak those people will rise and they will become leaders and they will lead and they will inherit meaning all the artificial and non-real leaders will automatically get washed away and taken away. This phenomena is a social phenomena. It happened practically every now and then in the history, if you look, the Islamic Revolution of Iran back in 1979 was a very good example of it. People who were not being counted, they said, no, we are here and we need to be counted. And their count was Shah had to go. The whole structure changed. That story requires the knowledgeable people to talk, to say, to express themselves so that there is no room for ignorant people to come and make his story. This is why we should read. I'm addressing my younger brothers and sisters. Read books. Read history. Where did Israel come from? What happened in 1917? 1970, 1917, that's exactly 100 years ago. One of the ministers, the foreign minister of England, wrote a letter to the High Commissioner of England in Palestine expressing that His Majesty King of England has said, not writing, not any, has said that he doesn't mind for the Jews to be settled. 1917, remember 1917, no Holocaust had happened yet. He doesn't mind for the Jews to be settled in Palestine and set up their own government. Who is he? What has he got? That is the colonial power who has defeated the Ottoman Empire in the First World War gives himself the right to just, on a piece of paper, a few lines, there we go, Jews, you have got your land. And in that letter, so hypocritically says, and I hope that in you getting settled there, you will not do injustice to the uh, people who are already there. meaning do not ruin their houses on their heads, do not evacuate them hypocritically. How? How can it be possible? Since then, back in 1948, after the Second World War, then we see the establishment of Israel 
being acknowledged and accepted by United Nations. That's it. This is the whole reasoning behind existence of this artificial cancerous gland. Middle East as a whole not only has got oil, oil and gas are only tip of the iceberg. Afghanistan, all those mountains, Iran, plenty of other minerals, very, very expensive minerals. So how can we, now I'm thinking on behalf of the arrogance of the world, how can we keep this area, which we, we call it east of Asia, <coughs> sorry, west of Asia, we are west of Asia, west of Asia, they call it Middle East. How can we get this place troubled all the time, boiling, all the time, not settled? Because if it is settled, nobody can get those minerals cheap. If it is boiling, we can get it cheap. So this is why the, this Imam Khomeini Rahmatullah calls it cancerous, cancerous gland. It has to be surgically removed. if the people of the Middle East want to have the sovereign rights of ruling their own life. There is no any further root to this cancerous gland. And inshallah ta'ala, by you young people, yes, Alian, you and you and you, studying, reading the books, reading the history, learning about your rights, learning about what matters, and learning that Islam has come and the meaning of La ilaha illallah is there are no second class citizens in the world. There are no class citizens in the world. All human beings, لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. We, Muslims, do not accept any oppression from anybody, and we do not oppress anybody. We do not seek exploiting other human beings when we do not allow others to exploit us. This is the hub of definition of mustaz'af. And inshallah, we will be manifestations of those mustaz'afin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like to make them warithin, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah help us to understand uh, and endear this day of what's the last Friday of every uh, Ramadan so that it is not only dependent on one person or two people to commemorate it. Many people are ready there to pick up the flag and carry it forward, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salawat. This Mr. Qasim Shah and his wife, Huma Khanum, are the main bosses of this Hussein here. So they ordered me to go back and stay there, wait for them to come to me. I think they have got some gift for me or for Sheikh Jihad, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Well, um, yes, once more, salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Sheikh Jihad, people have appreciated you being here. And every night, energetically energize everybody's moral uh, and uh, mental and religious commitments. Please come forward and collect this uh, souvenir uh, just co to commemorate your services here to us. <laughs> Shukran. Salawat. Yes, of course, you deserve a lot more. We cannot afford to give you any more. This is a token. I was actually saying, you say it is more deserving of this than me. Ahsan, <laughs> Jazakallah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ahsan. <laughs> One more salawat for Sheikh Jihad. Wow.